And then Donnie, I I don't want to I don't want to start off the show by ripping on somebody who used to play for the Steelers, but I have been waiting to rip on somebody who plays for the Steelers. Al Villanueva, Big Al, is headed to the Baltimore Ravens, and if that is not bad enough, he threw salt on the wound and said that he is excited and that some of his motivation comes from playing the Steelers twice a year. I don't think he realizes that he's about to line up across from TJ Watt playing right tackle for the first time in his career, but Big Al wants to come home to Pittsburgh and face the should-be defensive player of the year. Yeah, uh, should be back-to-back defensive player of the year. If you're trying to do the buck for everybody. Um, shocking, yeah. Surprising, probably not, given the nature of how Alejandro Villanueva has carried himself um, through his stint with the Pittsburgh Steelers, now obviously with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, one thing I will say is it's really funny watching Baltimore Ravens fans go from Alejandro Villanueva isn't good to now Alejandro Villanueva can replace the footsteps of Orlando Brown and become a key part of the pass protection. Um, the pass for, protection. For the Ravens. And yeah, and we're, we're, we're talking about a team who predominantly runs the football. I mean, they'll, they'll run it 40 to 50 times a game. And they just signed a very not good run blocker. So I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure where the logic there is. You, you, what was the contract that, that he got? Two years, $14 million, $8 million guaranteed. Yeah, so it's not like an egregious contract, you know, especially for a, for a tackle, seven million dollars is nowhere near the top. But man, like, good for Al because he got paid. But if he thinks he's looking forward to playing the lot, the likes, excuse me, of T.J. Watt and the rest of the Steelers' defense, let alone you know, why I mean, they, they still have a phenomenal front seven. He's going to be in for the rude awakening. I feel like he should already have a little bit of that taste, you know, going up against those guys in practice every single day. But, I mean, when you throw that little mixture of the Steelers-Ravens robbery into it, it's going to take on a whole other meaning, and I don't think he's ready for it. No, he's not. Al Villanueva, for one, anybody who thinks that the Baltimore Ravens are just suddenly going to be a passing team, I don't know what you've been watching. I get that they added Bateman in the draft. It was a great pick. I got it. Lamar Jackson is still a run first quarterback and I love Lamar Jackson. I think he's got all the tools to be a pass first quarterback, but he's not, that's not who he is. That team is designed to misdirection run you. And when it comes to trying to protect the passer, I mean, they do a pretty good job because they have Lamar Jackson. You don't really need to do much. You want to know what you need to excel in run blocking. Al Villanueva doesn't do that. As you said, this team doesn't get better from it. They just paid $14 million over two years I get that it's probably just a one-year, maybe a two-year deal if they can't find anybody. But to replace him with, I mean, it's Orlando Brown. And I I understand that whole thing, too, is Orlando Brown wanted to go if he couldn't move over to left tackle. You can't replace Ronnie Stanley, even though you don't know if he's going to be ready by the start of the season. So at this point, you got to reach out to somebody. You're going to reach out to Al Villanueva, who's never played right tackle before. At 32 years old, you just expect him to jump across the line and be totally fine on a new team with with a new playbook. I mean, that doesn't, none of it adds up. And Al Villanueva talked the way he is to keep going on. I mean, when was Al Villanueva ever really truly a stealer? And I get that maybe I'm challenging somebody I shouldn't, but I mean, Al Villanueva has done a lot for the NFL, a lot for the Pittsburgh Steelers and a lot for this country, obviously. But at the end of the day, he's been a lot of distractions for a team who, that doesn't necessarily mean need more distractions and at the same time has never really acknowledged that he's been a problem more than he's been productive. Yeah, most definitely. That, that's going all the way back to uh, whenever he stood out in the tunnel for the national anthem away from the rest of the team, whenever they played in Chicago a few years ago. And granted, you know, he, he said immediately that he regretted it. He like shouldn't have done it. But, you know, the anthem was playing. He didn't want to disrespect his country. And, you know, him being a former military personnel, and obviously I can definitely respect that, you know, shout out to him for serving and protecting our country. But you go from that to – um, you know, him having a, a different last name, um, sorry, a different name of somebody who is a victim of a, um, not a victim of a hate crime, but, you know, uh, whenever the NFL went through the whole period of trying to highlight, um, you know, my, minority names, you know, different people and stuff, the Steelers all settled um, on one name. I think he went with Antoine Rose Jr. Was that the yeah, name? Yeah, it was Antoine name? Rose Jr. And he wrote, yeah. he wrote Alwyn Cash Jr. Or, I don't That's know if it was right. Jr., Alwyn Cash. And yeah, and that story is great. You know what I mean? Like a Medal of Honor guy who eventually, I believe, actually received the award. 
Like it, it was all great, but the fact that it took a week and a half before Al Villanueva spoke to the media, I mean, the dude causes problems and then he hides from everybody. And that's uh, that's always been my biggest beef with them is that Al Villanueva is a dude who just shows up on Sundays and plays mediocre football and then causes these distractions and never wants to be accountable for them and just explain them because they're all pretty good reasons. Like nobody had a problem with the Alwyn Cash name after it, it was all explained, after Al talked to the media. But before then, everybody had a huge – it was a huge issue. I mean, me and you were talking about it before the show that just reporting it caused a lot of issues for the people reporting it. And he was just sitting around letting everybody else take the bullet while he was just sitting there. And and it's what he's going to do again. He's going to say all these things about the Steelers, and then we're never going to hear from him again. And Steelers fans are just going to be mad at him forever. That's that's where we're at. I think Al Villanueva's reputation with the Steelers is worse than Mike Hilton's right now. Yeah, I I think after those comments, it's definitely not a stretch. I mean, you, both of them signed with division rivals. Uh, Mike Hilton, I, I don't think he ever went along those lines whenever he made comments about, you know, looking forward to playing the Steelers, at least in that yeah. sort of tone that Villanueva kind of portrayed himself in right there. Um, but I, I feel like the last thing you want to do is give your former team a bulletin board material. I mean, he could have walked out. He could have said, hey, you know, I really enjoyed my time in Pittsburgh. You know, thanks so much. It's some of the best years of my life, never forget it, blah, 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 blah. You know, the standard typical stuff guys say whenever they leave. Uh, but instead, you know, the two times a year, maybe even three times, depending on how both of the seasons go, that the Steelers will play the Ravens. If he thinks that won't be posted up in the locker room everywhere, if he thinks TJ Walker won't remember what he said or anybody else on that defense, he, he's mistaken. So, you know, I, I don't exactly. think he did himself any favors right there. No, he did not. I mean, Al Villanueva left, and if he stayed quiet, there would have been no problems except for me. And he kept talking, and now he's here. And it, the worst part is if he plays on the left side because Ronnie Stanley isn't ready and Alex Highsmith makes him look like a bum, then that's that's great for the Steelers, and it's hilarious for anybody making fun of Al Villanueva. When he faces T.J. Watt, it's not even going to be close. Like that's not going to be somebody that T.J. Watt can just suddenly, you know, is going to play to their level. You have T.J. Watt, who's as we mentioned, should be a back-to-back defensive player of the year. Going up against a guy who just, as we've mentioned, switched sides of the line and now has to protect you at 32 and obviously decreasing in t- in talent over the last two, maybe three years. It's been a minute since Al Villanueva has been good enough to be a starting left tackle for the Steelers. To say that he's going to be a starting run tackle against the best running team or right tackle against the best running team in football. I don't think you're – I think that's a loss waiting to happen. But if you're a Steelers fan, if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, you're pretty excited about this. This is a great move. The Steelers avoided him. Got Dan Moore, which, you know, has some potential even if he doesn't start right now. And I'll take Chooks moving to the left side before I take Al Villanueva nine times out of ten.